Hello and welcome to another edition of a narrated Pokemon battle. Um, now I'm going to be narrating a few battles that I got, and the battles are rarely used tier matches. And the reason why I'm actually getting like quite a number of matches into one single video is because the matches were either relatively short or it wasn't the most extremely interesting match out there so yeah so um, let's get right on into team preview for our first match so ah yeah yes okay so I'm seen from the opponent's point of view and my account is smoke weed yeah which is just a joke okay I don't smoke weed just to set the record straight so I'm actually using a real Lu team, which is like rather gay, but I decided like hey let's just try out because I'm just playing it for fun. So I got myself a real Lu with the prankster raw copycat shenanigans going on and then I have a custard berry lead crustle to set up spikes and stealth rock without go uh, before going down. Then I have Choi Scarf Ember with Sleep Talk. Uh, it's just my revenge killer in general. Then I have a defensive Rotom normal form for spin blocking purposes. Uh, especially defensive Clefable to pass wishes and also tank special attacks. And finally Whimsicott with uh, Encore and Taunt and all these uh, priority moves with Prankster to support my team. So yeah, let's get right on into the match. So I'm gonna lead with my Crustle as it's my uh, Custard Berry lead. And he leads off with Rotom Mode, just goes for the Bolt Switch as I can set up my Stealth Rock freely and proceed to get out my Spikes as he does the same. He sets up his own uh, Stealth Rock followed by an, a layer of Spikes and so basically now we are just trading hazards but now since I've gotten all my uh, hazards up I go into my real loot thinking that perhaps I could get a real loot sweep going so we're gonna go for stone edge and I can I click raw raw him out into the spirit tomb and at this point I was hoping that I could get my prankster sweep going and as you can see entry hazards are really like taking a toll on his all his Pokemon and his Crustle takes 50% from the hazards alone and the thing is now I roll him in a Medicham I was hoping that he didn't have a priority move like Fake Out or Bullet Punch but it turns out that he has the Fake Out that means Riolu is not going to be sweeping anytime soon so he is going to take me out with the Ice Punch but now I can get a free switch in into my Rotom it's defensive it can take any move the Medicham wants to go for so I'm just going to go for the safe Thunderbolt as he chooses to fodder off his Crustle but now he sends in his Spiritomb and now here I make a really bad play what I should have done was gone for the will o wisp then gone for my attacking move but no I straight away go for the Thunderbolt take a hell of a lot of damage from the Sucker Punch that means my Rotom is now basically death fodder at this point so now he can basically bring in his Rotom mode, most, most probably Scarf, take me out with the Volt Switch. And so yeah, so he is going to go back to his Chinchino, which again takes loads of damage from um, the, the hazards. And my side, my Ambot, takes a lot of damage too. But since I'm Scarf, I know I'll be able to outspeed non-Scarf Chinchino, go for the safe lab blitz, take him out. And now he goes into his Crawdon, I really do not know why, as because from his range of health, Flare Blitz is a clear uh, one-hit KO. So he just basically loses his Crawdon there and then. But uh, now since I think that, hey, the Rotom mo most probably Scarf, I do not want to be losing my Ember, so I'm going to go with my Clear Fable. Unfortunately, Thunderbolt paralyzes me, and he is going to go for another Thunderbolt. I'm going to go for my Seismic Toss. It is a two-hit KO. But as you can see, because of that paralysis, it's going to be very unfortunate as I get par fully paralyzed the next turn, allowing him to take me out with the next Thunderbolt. So now the score is 2-3. to three. It's really intense. I'm going to send out my Whimsicott. I was hoping 
that my U-turn could take him out because Thunderbolt's going to do a really good chunk and no he lives with 1% which was really infuriating because now I have sent my Crustle live the with 1% and because I do have a Castled Berry I can go first go for my Ed Scissor take the Rotom Mo out so now I was really hoping that he only had Fake Out as his priority because if he has the Bullet Punch he basically wins so he goes for a Fake Out take my Crustle out go into the ball and now here's the moment of truth does the Medicham have the med the Bullet Punch no he does not go for the Flare Blitz take him out and that will be a very narrow 1-0 victory in my favor. So yeah, that was the first match. Now going into the second match. Yeah, so let's get the battle going. So um, I lead with my Rotom because he, I see that he does have the couple tops because uh, my Crassel would be a really bad uh, lead ag against the couple tops. And now he goes for Stealth I, I burn him. And now I go for the Wheel of Wisp predicting him to switch. But instead he goes for the Sword Stance and I'm like, what? doing and basically I just take him out next turn with the Thunderbolt which really doesn't make sense to me and now he goes in the Escavalier I'm like what can Escavalier do and he, and I miss the Willow Wisp goes for the Mega Horn and I resist both his stat moves I really do not know why he's doing that and he goes for the Willow Wisp next turn and he goes for the return um I do not know what this guy is doing okay so uh I'm like Okay, and I just go for my safe Thunderbolt. I'll do a really good chunk to this Drapion, and now I do not want to stay in to be taking any dark type move he wants to go for. So I'm going to go into my Crustle, knowing that I can take uh, the Drapion on and get up my uh, hazards real quick. So uh, now it's going to go for the Earthquake as I can now set up my Stealth Rock, and since I am in uh, Custard Berry range, I can now eat my Custard Berry, go first, go for that first layer of spikes as uh, he does get a critical hit with the Earthquake and again, I do not know why he's going for the Earthquake when he can go for the Crunch which does more damage but now I can go into my Riolu and it's basically a Riolu sweep from this point onwards because I can simply click Raw uh, and just copycat everything because he does not have a priority user or any viable priority user on his team and the thing is as you can see all his Pokemon have leftovers I I do not understand this guy he he must have been I think he must have been new to this game that's why he like made all those kind of weird plays and stuff but yeah we all we all learn and we grow better as we play so you know this guy, he learns the power of real loop. So yeah, basically now what I'm doing is I'm just clicking, spamming the copycat and just drawing him out and basically there's nothing he can really do at this point. And I'm actually surprised that he doesn't click the forfeit button as that's what most people do. Maybe he thought that he had a chance but no. The, with real loop having that, um, that copycat raw chain going on, there's no way that he can stop it since he does not have a priority user. and. Yeah, his Excavalier goes down, goes into its Electivire, doesn't really matter what um, Pokemon he goes to because I'm just gonna click Copycat again, go for the Raw, into his Drapion, just just keep on clicking that, that Copycat and just watch everything take 25% damage or more in Typhlosion's case every time I Raw him out into something. So basically this is going to um, be close to wrap up of the match as he stepped out, bites the dust, and so does the Typhlosion. And Drapion comes in 1%, go for my Raw, and Electivire is taken down to a point where next time he's uh, Rawed in, he will be taken down. So he does decide to profit. And okay, so let's get into the third match. Let's start the match right now. So yeah, my opponent leads with the Magneton and he goes for Thunder Wave which is a really interesting option on Magneton, don't really see it often but now I can go for my Stealth Rock and go for my first layer of spikes and now I actually made a really good play, predict him to go for a Thorn and does go for a Rock Blast but of course I have to miss which is 
which is really sucks for me because now he can get up his stealth rock as now I hit my rock blast. Fortunately though, I hit three times which allows me to take him out and now he goes into Magmorta. And I expected him to take me out once it like with a fire blast. He goes for a substitute, eats a citrus berry, and I just go for for a rock blast, get three hits and take him out. So I really do not know what he was doing over there. Perhaps he didn't know rock blast mechanics. So now I'm gonna go into the polygraph. I know I can actually take one waterfall. So I'm gonna go for my second layer of spikes. But seeing that now he's going for a uh, bulk ups, I do not want him to be stacking all his uh, all his boosts. So I'm just gonna encore him into the waterfall, which is a uh, really uh, which just renders the polygraph useless. And now I'm just gonna go for my leech seed as that's the safe play. But he does sort of predict that goes into a Moongus and now I go for the Taunt not wanting to uh, get status but he sort of maybe predicts that goes for the clear smog I don't really know as I go for the U-turn get a rather useless crit and I can go into my real loop and take the clear smog like a boss but uh, now I was actually hoping that I could get my real loop sweep here uh, unless his Scyther uh, carries the quick attack which is Scyther's only form of like viable priority but of course he has the quick attack which means that again Riolu is not going to be sweeping in this match as the Scyther can take me down in two quick attacks and now I go into Clefable and he has the knock off which is a, an option I don't really see and now he goes for Sword Stun so he has like a Sword Stun's quick attack knock off Scyther which is really weird and since he goes for quick attack this turn it's like he doesn't even have a stab move which really, I, I don't really know why he doesn't have a stab move, but hey, I'm not complaining. So I'm going to go into my castle, uh, thinking that it's most probably going to go for a status move, and now I can set up my last layer of spikes, and now my custard berry can activate, I can go for egg scissor, do a, a decent amount to the Among Us, and now I can go in my ember, it's scarfed, it, uh, it should outspeed, uh, Majority, it outspeeds his whole team, can go for the Flare Blitz, take that Magneton out and now he goes to a Polyrath and from this range I cannot one hit KO him with the Flare Blitz and I do not want to, be, to lose my Ember so I'm gonna switch into Rotom as he goes for the rest and he actually has a Chesto Berry which is rather interesting and now I go for the Will this I miss as he goes for the circle throw which I really don't understand and I go for my next Will of Wiz, I miss again which is like oh my god that I I was really frustrated with that as he goes into a Among Us now as I actually decide to go for a Thunderbolt as I was really fed up with a Will of Wiz miss us and I go for the Shadow Ball does not quite take him out as he can he gets the toxic off but it's basically my game as I can go for the Thunderbolt and it's a clear 2 hit KO on his Polyrath and I can just click Thunderbolt, take out his Polyrath and his last Pokemon is Yamungus which after all the, the hand tree hazards it will not lift the Shadow Ball so that was the third game now moving on to the fourth and final game so okay uh, I'm gonna lead with my Crustle again. It's my it's my Custard Berry lead as he goes with his Manectric. Just gonna Volt Switch out. Can get up my first layer of spikes and now I know uh, I can lift any uh, one hit Hitmonchan wants to go for. So I'm gonna go for my second layer of spikes. But it actually makes a rather good play in my opinion. Goes for the Ice Punch instead of the Drain Punch because Drain Punch would have taken me into Custard Berry range. As now I'm gonna switch out into Rotom, not wanting to lose. Uh, my crustle so early as I go for the will of wisp hitting the manic trick and now I make a really good play predict him to go for the switcher rule and I switch into my own uh, ember which has the choice scarf and it actually turns out that he has a choice scarf too and now knowing that he's going to go for the bolt switch I go into my whimsicott just to uh, resist the hit and he goes into his tangrove and not wanting to take a uh, uh, most a possible sleep powder I go for Torn as he actually carries the hidden power I think it's fire or ice should be uh, one of those so uh, 
I go into Ambon to scare him out and now I make a really good play, predict him to go into slow game, go for the wild charge, does a hell of a lot. And now I make a second good play, predict him to go out into his Steelix or one of his uh, Pokemon that can take the take the wild charge and I go into my Clefable as it will be able to take them on admirably. So I'm just basically going to go for my Seismic Toss at it's, as it does. Uh, a good amount of damage, consistent damage as he can set up his Stealth Rock and since he does not have a Ghost type, I feel free to go for yet another Seismic Toss and now just gonna go for Protect to Scout what he wants to do and he goes for the Sleep Powder so now I'm hoping that he actually does not switch up into attacking move I go into my Ambor and because my Ambor does carry the it does carry the sl Sleep Talk and now I'm hoping I get a Flare Blitz and I'm re really lucky that I do get get Flare Blitz one third chance, which was um, which was really good for me. So now I know that I will not be able to take that Himachan out in one hit. So I'm gonna go to my Rotom and I can block that Rapid Spin as he does just that. So now Rotom is a a really good Pokemon against his uh, Hitmonchan. So I actually go for the Will of Wisp, which was. A sort of bad play as he goes in a manic trick since it's already burnt and I do not want to be taking uh, like a bolt switch or something like that so I'm going to like going to go in my clear fable and I don't think he's going to go for the switcher rule since I went to M ball last time so I take that bolt switch really well as he goes in a scully pit and now I go in a crustle because I know I can survive stealth rock and I'll be in custard berry range goes for the swords dance and now uh, he really doesn't see that coming because I, my Custard Berry activates, I hit first, go for Rock Blast, hit three times, take that Scully Pete right out, which means that it's really good for me. But now he can go in a hit Monchan, I do not want him to be spinning uh, those spikes away. So I'm going to go with my Rotom as he sort of maybe predicts that or you're just trying to kill that Crustle. So uh, anyway, go for the Shadow Ball as it it's the most consistent move against his whole team as he goes for the Ice Punch and now I actually made a sort of bad play because what I should have done is I should have just gone for another another um, Shadow Ball because he sort of predicts that goes into his Manic Trick to take the Lightning Rod boost and now basically what I have to do is I have to fodder the Crustle off to the Self Rocks as the Manic Trick will be taken out next turn by the Burn Damage so now, I'm gonna send in my Ambor as it's uh, like the number one threat to this team, although I am asleep. So I can uh, go for my Sleep Talk, so long as I don't get a Wild Charge, I get a stat move, I'll be able to take that Himonchan out, and I get a Flare Blitz, uh, get a useless critical hit, and now he, uh, since it's pretty much game, since all he has left is Slow King and Steelix, he chooses to, uh, he actually disconnects. So, yeah that will be the games for today hopefully you all enjoy and i will see you all next time goodbye